Welcome to Lurk Assault, another COH2 replay cast. And this time we're gonna be reviewing a replay sent in by Fives if I can find them. Where the fuck are you? Okay, you're over here. So, Fives playing as USF on Lurk Assault 4v4. Uh, his allies are gonna be easy playing as the AI. So, the AI playing as the British. Uh, Flackman. Playing as the British, I recognize you. Uh, he was in the other replay that Five sent, so I'm guessing they're friends. And Sevi playing as the Soviets. Uh, on the enemy team, we're gonna have the GOTF or GOTF or GOTF, whatever the fuck clan, the GOAT clan, uh, playing as Wehrmacht Major, uh, Ankalgon, Wehrmacht, Kanastiko of the Nothing clan, playing as Wehrmacht. And Lagmaster J playing as the Wehrmacht. All Wehrmacht! Okay, wasn't expecting that. I was actually not paying that much attention in the loading screen. So, okay, so I'm really, really pissed because of three reasons, okay? Actually, no. Yeah, no, three reasons. First, Relic is releasing a patch tomorrow, it seems. So I must record something like seven replays uh, of Backlog before they pretty much smash my... And someone is fucking... Oh my god, someone rang the door. Oh my god. So, I'm now pissed because of five reasons. Because, well, okay. Someone decided so, I'm that it was just such a good idea to rang my bell. Okay, first reason. That was, that was first reasons. Uh, I rang my bell in the middle of a cast. Okay, so that was my first reason to be pissed. Second reason. Relic is releasing a patch. Uh, tomorrow, and I have to cast all the replays. Third reason, uh, Earth had sent me a replay claiming that it was USF versus Osthair on Crossing in the Woods, and he was playing USF. Of so, of course, I get into the game, and it's on Samoski Winter, and it's a UKF versus Osthair replay where he's not in there. And it was a shitty replay as well, so, you know, uh, thank you, Earth, for making me waste about 35 minutes. Then I go, um, I go try to upload it, and I realize, oh wait, it's got no sound. So, yeah, uh, that's another reason to be pissed, so that's like four. And the fifth was, um... Okay, the fifth one is, I fucking forgot the fifth reason I'm pissed. So, yeah. Talk about, you know, killing two birds with one stone. Um, the USF Riflemen are gonna start to push up, so we're gonna finally talk a bit about the game. Uh, the USF Riflemen attempt to push up in the center against the 742. Gonna get penned in the road, but the second Rifleman squad will be able to flank because of the miss micro of the MG42. But they will actually focus the, uh, pan the Grenadiers instead of the MG, and now they will almost walk them back into the MG's firing arc. The MG realizes that it doesn't really have anything to fear from the Riflemen, will leave them to Grenadiers, whereas the other Rifleman squad will get pretty much mowed down by the murderous fire of the MG42. Looks like Ankalgon uh, went for free machine guns, so it looks like he will attempt to just use his allies as the mobile force, and whereas he will spam MGs. Oh, actually, everyone is spamming MGs. What the fuck is going on? The so Lagmaster J is also going for MG42 spam, and he's taken up the north with pretty much all of the houses. That's very interesting. Uh, giving up quite a bit of territory to the allies, actually, um, and especially giving up this feet, very nice VP. But one of his pioneer squads will find the time to push up and capture one of the points. But the Flakman, Flakman's universal carrier will easily be able to deal with that. So universal carrier uh, should really uh, be upgraded as soon as possible to a flamethrower, considering the playstyle of the Germans right now. Really will require a flamethrower to deal with. Uh, Kanastiko is also going for uh, two machine guns. Uh, Ankalgon also, also going for machine gun spam, and the third player also going for machine guns, pretty much mostly. Uh, so it looks like they are going for some really interesting play, because they're also going for a lot of caches. They pretty much cached up um, a lot of their points, and Major has enough uh, resources to cash up uh, two more points, and then he's gonna... looks like he's gonna go for Opal Blitzes. So since there's really not much uh, interesting engagements going on, it's just basically infantry running into buildings with MGs and dying. Um, let's talk about the Doctrine selections a little bit. Uh, we have Assault Support Doctrine, uh, which is good because of the Tiger and the Opal Blitz. Um, also, the f uh, Fragmentation Mom Administration run can be pretty decent units. Um, Sebi is going for Tier 1, 
and is going to push up with his penals and his clown car, which will be pretty much the counter to the machine gun spam. Excellent, excellent choice for Sevi. Will definitely help hard counter the choices that the Germans have made. So what right now he really needs to be doing is repair his clown car, go around trying to cap and cap points and he will realize the extent of the caching up that the Germans are doing and we'll easily use his uh, penals and scout car to destroy whatever um, caches are around and then he can help support his allies in the center and the north. He will definitely be key to the success of the allies so it looks like um, fives went for lieutenant here and then a flat cap track. Now I disagree with this because uh, the Flak Half-Truck will be pretty decent against the machine guns, but uh, the Flak Half-Truck is not the best unit against buildings. Uh, what I would have uh, much liked, much more liked out of him is Captain into um, Pack Howitzer into Stuart. That would definitely help out a lot in dislodging these machine guns from the buildings. So we have the Flamethrower Wasp on the uh, Universal Carrier. Finally uh, gonna be able to destroy these houses. Uh, but we have some Grenadiers attempting to push up against it. We'll easily be able to hand across it, but there are some uh, intersections up here uh, which can deal some damage to the um, Grenadiers and protect the uh, Universal Carrier, but the Universal Carrier will be one shotted by the Hans Faust. Because of the uh, pretty much reckless play that, um, what's his name, Flakman, decided to. Uh, employ and that was a pretty bad decision on his part to just stand up stand there and let the grenadiers reach it he could have easily kited back and pretty much saved himself a lot of trouble so grenadiers are already pushing up in the center against the forward assembly of the ai so that's going to be interesting the ai has gone for three uh, infantry sections and upgraded them he's also gone for bolster infantry squads uh, which is very interesting. Um, also, a universal carrier is being built by him, which is a very late universal carrier. Let's not waste too much time on the AI. Major already has an execution scout car, but the mine placed by, uh, wisely placed by Sebi, will easily destroy the engine and almost one shot the um, scout car. So the M3 will easily be able to finish it off. And it will also be able to finish off this machine gun, uh, probably, which was recruited by Pioneers, it looks like. and. Yep, that machine gun will go down. It was also uh, pretty much decimated by this mine. So pretty good play by Sebi. Uh, sorry for the little uh, interruption there. Uh, pretty good play by Sebi. Uh, he's going to be able to easily push back into the pretty much underbelly of the Germans if he so chooses. And if he doesn't do that, uh, then he will do his team a great disservice. Because his team really needs it right now. The allies are attempting to push up in the center and the north. They're starting to do a little bit of a better job at it, but as you can see, these flame for engineers and these machine guns are inflicting heavy losses on their infantry. Lagmaster J went for Festung support doctrine, which is an excellent choice in team games because of the howitzer and the relief infantry, and also in the early game, the mortar half track is a pretty good decision to clear out buildings such as these um, and placements such as this mortar pet uh, but the mortar pet looks like it's in already a lot of trouble because of these panda tracks that are attempting to destroy it uh, pretty much a brace structure is needed right now and I'm not sure why Flakman is not bracing this building it's not like he's got many units to deal with so really uh, the brace at the last possible moment um, the enroll engineers are attempting to repair it but they will probably not be able to repair it in time because of the uh, suppression that is going down on them Blackman also went for Vanguard operations, which means that he does not have access to um, emplacement repair, stand fast of the Girl Engineer Regiment. And the one of our universal carriers is gone. Oh, that's the AIs. Uh, the AI also went for a Gophers in a very safe location that will only reduce the in the air later on. Uh, Fives went for uh, Heavy Cavalry Company, which is an excellent choice. And he also went for the Captain build. Lieutenant into Captain build is definitely the correct choice when you're going to Heavy Cavalry Company. Um, fives, I'm noticing that you're moving around, around your A half track like it's a normal unit. No, this is not a good idea. You want to be doing with the A half track is not moving it with the right click. You want to be with the U key, uh, which is reverse. You want it to reverse into the fight so that it can fire instantly. So it looks like the Panzer Grenadiers were um, almost wiped out by the Rifleman and the Lieutenant and one of the um, 
Trex was dropped, so that's really, really good for the Allies. What's also really, really good for the Allies is the fact that Sebi, over here in the south, is pretty much complete control of the south. Um, he should be really uh, attempting to push up. He would find pretty much nothing over here. There's like a supply base over here almost. There's an officer, a truck, and two engineers just sitting around. He could easily push up against them with these penals and pretty much wipe out this entire group of units. We already have an Ostwind on the way for Major. That's a very fast Ostwind. So that will definitely give Sevi a few um, pauses. But what's really good about um, what Sevi is doing is that he's managed to capture these two uh, VPs, both the center castle and the southern village area. Um, and that's really good because um, right now the Germans have pretty much complete control of the north. Uh, the Allies have only now managed to recapture one of these VPs. They have lost uh, 119 VPs, uh, rather 111 VPs in these earlier stages of the game, so they really need the extra VPs in the south to regain a bit of that reach, um, victory lead. So the Opal Blitz uh, and the Engineers of course stand no chance against the mechanized female force over here, but um, at the same time the Black Panther Ostwin will easily be able to deal with this. Um, there's a, There are two AT guns, no, one AT gun and a few mines in the south. Uh, but the AT gun still needs to be pushed up, and if the AT gun can be pushed up, and possibly Sebi should also uh, get himself a conscript squad to throw AT grenades, uh, he can possibly use uh, satchel charges and the AT gun to uh, destroy this Ospin if it's uh, not monitored correctly, slash he can, he can get some engine damage on it. But it looks like the penals will be forced to retreat, and the AT gun is only now pushing up to destroy this Ospin and force it away. German defenses in the north look as strong as ever. Uh, there's a, a, re a reinforcement bunker um, and an MG covering the north, the, the extreme north, or rather. Um, some mines would be pretty good for Lagmaster J. He does have the munitions. He's also going for Panda Ranger spam, which is very interesting um, after the MGs. He's lost his first mortar half track somehow. He's going for a second one though. Uh, Uncle Gon, uh, also went for assault support as well as uh, major, uh, so that's very interesting. They're gonna spam Opal Blitzes. I'm not sure if you can get two Opal Blitzes on one territory, uh, like from two different players, because the Opal Blitz only affects one player, uh, the player that builds it. So I'm guessing it is possible to have two Opal Blitzes on one territory technically, which would make for a very, uh, very hilarious sight uh, to just to see like imagine just four opal blitzes on one territory it's like bitch please truck squad has arrived that would be quite quite cool to do uh, i should do that sometime that would be very interesting i, I don't really play that many 44s but that would be very interesting to do and the universal carrier of course from the ai getting abandoned in the middle of any enemy territory so the ai as always being counterproductive Rangers are on the field for Fives. Fives is flowing a crap load of resources, but, um, well, in my opinion, a Stuart could be a good idea. Uh, he would need to be very careful of these Shreks that are on the field, but uh, the Stuart could definitely decimate um, them at long range if he can keep the distance and avoid getting hit. So the Rangers uh, will also be very useful in dealing with these Panzer Ranger squads. Panzer Ranger is going to attempt to throw a bundle grenade, but the lieutenant will notice this and run away in time. There's a Bet 2 Rifleman Zuka squad, uh, rather a Shrek squad, which is a very, very big problem for the Germans. Some flamethrowers are attempting to counterattack these Rangers, and they will probably be fairly successful in doing damage to them, but they will also be forced to retreat. And if they don't retreat, then they will be wiped. As you can see, fairly easy wipe for the Rangers. They might actually attempt to take flamethrower, but they won't be forced away by the spam of Panzer Rangers and the mortar hits that they were eating. Uh, a Cromwell is on the field for Blackman. Which is probably a good idea, at least one of the allies really needs to be going for some kind of early armor. There's, there's, there's also an MG42 that can be recruited over here, I'm not really sure why no one's doing it. The flat half should really be running away from these Shreks. In the south, uh, there's also a Panzer 4 on the field, it looks like the Ostwin was destroyed over here by the AT gun, possibly. Um, there's a Panzer 4 on the field for Major. Right now Major has a very interesting strategy, like it's a good strategy, but his unit management really needs to be improved and that will come with experience of course as I always say but again it's very interesting what these German players are attempting to do I, I like it I really like it especially since uh, Lagmaster J and Amnastico 
will have a pretty much late game armor on the field soon. There's an Austin from Canastico. Uh, Lagmaster J is going for tier 4, it looks like, which is what I would do. Um, he does have the resources for, he will have the resources for Boom Bear fairly soon. Ankalgon uh, also went for tier 3 and he's getting out an Austin. Um, in my opinion, he could have also gone for a tier 4 and possibly gone for a Panther and, or maybe a Panther. Or, uh, a Centaur from the AI will definitely counter this Austin, interestingly enough, along with the uh, Cromwell. Promo will probably be pan deposited by these grenadiers, but the grenadiers are in a very precarious situation. Um, the Promo will easily be able to destroy the Austin, and the grenadiers are wiped by a mortar round. Promo is in very big jeopardy though from these pan effects, and he will be forced to retreat. We also saw Pack attempting to push up and duel with the Promo at close range, which is not exactly the best idea. Another splendid Promo is on the field for Clackman, who's also got two mortars, and pretty much it. Uh, he's got one roll engineer. Two promos and two mortars, which is a very flimsy force, but um, he might be able to get some more rolling here soon. An excellent mine from the Germans will uh, pretty much destroy the uh, Centaur AE tank along with a wall and pretty much an entire Grenadier squad. And also, the Germans are very lucky to have not lost more in that. So, it looks like a strafing run is being called on in the south by Major. Uh, strafing run will not be able to deal that much damage. To the uh, Soviet units that are defending the southern, southern victory point. Uh, the Panzer IV was attempting to push up earlier, it looks like, but uh, it was met with resistance from the AT gun, likely. Uh, more Opal Blitzes are being called in. I really want to see like two Opal Blitzes on one point now. Like, this is the only thing I want to see right now. Like, the only, f the only way this could be weirder is if like the Germans were going for one of those like Festung armor doctrines that can uh, hold down vehicles. And they just attempted to like hold down a shitload of boss twins like somewhere. I tried to do that once. It's it doesn't it doesn't work. <laughs> just it just doesn't work. So the Panzer Grandiers with Panzer Trex. There's there's just so many Panzer Grandiers. It's so weird. Like uh, the problem with all these Panzer Grandiers is that of course they will have a lot of trouble maintaining them with manpower, and especially since they have this many resource um, enhancing, uh, rather income enhancing tools. There's all these um, caches and these opal blitzes. They're gonna have a lot of resources so perhaps Grenadiers or Ostrupen would be better choices as mainline infantry uh, just because they are cheaper and so since they are cheaper they can more easily get the manpower for the late game armor that they want to be getting with that fuel uh, advantages they have. So the Broom Bear is on the field and this will, this will definitely be really good against the infantry of the allies, especially the fives. Who's the- oh, holy shit. <laughs> that was in the middle of my screen. Um, especially fives, who was uh, the main uh, infantry player for the allies. He's got, um, looks like, two squads of recommend, two officers, and two Rangers. Now, the second Ranger is a bit of an overkill, in my opinion, um, because, well, uh, the reason is that uh, one Ranger is already a lot, and they cost a lot to reinforce, so uh, you definitely want to be saving that manpower as you USF for the late game. Even if you're floating a lot, uh, having uh, two or three Riflemen, the two officers, and one Ranger squad is plenty of infantry, especially if you consider that he's also got a rear echelon troop. That he should be upgrading with a bazooka. Uh, one major, major mistake that Fives is making is that he's not upgrading his weapon racks. This is uh, a huge mistake uh, in the current meta because the um, USF right now really relies upon getting those bars on the riflemen and getting the, those veteran riflemen um, to compete with the Germans in the late game long range engagements. And also, um, the fact that the bar is pretty much the best LNG for close range definitely really helps out and would have made it, uh, made it pretty much. Uh, can't, can't think of the word. Um, would have made it unnecessary to get a second. Easiest word to think of. Uh, it would have made it unnecessary to get a second ranger squad for the close range if he had gone for another rifleman squad and upgraded them with BARs. So the AI is still being pretty much derp, and it's going for snipers and firefly. So that's that actually could be very useful for the uh, AI. There's also the brain carrier spam of the AI, which is very interesting. 
GA for some reason really lo loves to spam these light vehicles such as the Scott Car, Ram Carrier, and also the Cuba Wagon. The OKW AI is very bugged right now and it spams Kubo. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen it in one of the replays. I've casted and I've also seen it a lot in the actual game. Um, so the Mortar Half Track from Lagmaster J is starting to get to work. The Brum Bear will be attempting to push up in the south, but there's a T3485 out on the field for Sebi. Who did go for guard motor coordination? Now guard motor coordination is an excellent doctrine to pair up with Pino spam because, well, uh, where the Pinos lack an anti tank, then the guards will definitely make up for. And also, what the Pinos lack in long range, the guards also make up for. And also, the T3485s are just an all-around solid tank for the late game. So an excellent, excellent, uh, uh, what should I call it? Cluster bombing will stun the two Cromos. But the Cromos are attempting to push up in the center, pretty much charging in, destroying uh, a few of the Opal Blitzes, but getting pretty much decimated by Panzer Grenadiers and Panzer Effects. There's a huge counter attack coming in from the north from the Germans. There's like seven Panzer Grenadier spots streaming in from the north. It will definitely be a really bad deal for the Cromwells. They definitely need to run away. They're shooting at the MG in the building, which is not what I would be shooting at. What I would be shooting at. I would be shooting at the artillery to destroy it. The second Cromwell is attempting to circle strafe the Bloom Bear, which is damaging it fairly heavily from the front. And it will definitely be able to circle strafe it fairly soon, but uh, it's also in a bit of a- Oh, actually the Broom Bear shot will destroy the engine of the second Cromwell. So the Cromwell, this Cromwell will definitely go down, will be caught by the infantry. The Broom Bear also goes down from the Cromwell. Uh, there's a, uh, looks like a strafing support being called in. The Hawker Typhoons will, attempt to, will be attempting to deal with all this infantry for the Germans. But uh, there's also a bit of an issue because this Austin is going to body block me. No! The Austin will attempt to just allow the Cromwell to retreat. I'm really not sure why this, why this is, but these Panther Raiders, if they just stop and destroy it. No, what are you doing? They should. Oh god. This is, see, the main problem over here is that these Panther Raiders are not being attacked. If they have been attacked, they would have just stopped and destroyed the Cromwell easily. And also, another problem was that the polite Austin just allowed the enemy to escape and Kanastiko is being replaced by the AI. Kanastiko was of course the guy who lost a whole bunch of Ostwinds in that engagement and also lost the artillery it looks like. Uh, he went for a German mechanized which does, does have artillery and he also, it's also got the big command tank. So the Panzer Rangers are attempting to push up against the uh, Sherman Firefly but there's two Ranger squads. Uh, definitely will be a uh, bit of a match for these Panzer Rangers and the strafing run for the Typhoon will pretty much decimate the one squad that could have done anything, which is the plane for um, plane for Panther Rider. Planes is going to crash over here as well. So the Soviets are attempting to push up the operation by rushing over here. They will be pushing up in the uh, pretty much flank of the Germans. They finally realize that there's nothing that can stop their units, uh, except for a Panther, which is just coming off the field for Major. So Major is up to tier four after his um, adventures or rather misadventures with tier three. So there's also another panther on the field for Lagmaster J. Lagmaster J looks like he will attempt to counterattack in the center against the T-34-85s, but T-34-85s will start to mercilessly knife around the panther. There's also another panther though from Alcadon and a panther 4 from Fanastico, or rather the AI right now. So these T-34-85s are in a very, very bad spot. They will be easily destroyed by this German armor swarm. And right now, Sebi must be cursing his teammates because, well, uh, he was finally decided to push up and now they're not helping him in his hour of need. Uh, so this, this will definitely make the South a bit more um, uh, thinly held for the Soviets. It will take a while to rebuild that T-34-85 force, but uh, Fives is up to a shitload, or rather a shit truck fuck ton of resources. Yes, that is the correct scientific term. Measurement unit. Um, but right now, Fives, you... Okay, I know you want to go for the Pershing, and you have one command point to go. But, 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 hear me out, okay? Friend. You're my friend, so you can hear me, okay? Okay, good. You can easily go for a Major, and you'll still have... Okay, do the math. 463, the Major is 135, right? No, 128, they reduced that. Um, so the Major is 120, and the you have 470 fuel. So you're gonna have, what? But 370? Get the 100 down first, like they taught you in elementary school, then the 20 down. So look, oh look, I have 350 fuel left. 
What is the Pershing? Oh look, 230. So then I still have 120 fuel to go to get another unit. And then still have enough fuel for the Pershing. Ah, oh, so I can get a Major, a Sherman, and a Pershing. Oh my god, or maybe even a Jackson if I want. What is this magic? Maths. That's maths. You can do it in game because, well, you're not even fighting at this point. It's pretty much all your allies fighting and they're pretty much just wasting their units. So you can easily do a bit of math and get a much stronger force than you can have right now. You would have a much more mobile, much more complete force if you had gone for a Jackson or a Sherman along with your Pershing. It's kind of like if I can have five, uh, I don't know, cookies, why would I get two cookies? If I have enough money for five cookies, why just not get two cookies, you know? Um, or rather, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why not want to get five cookies? That is like stupid. Um, we have a scraping support being called in by Blackman, who's lost all of his Cromwells again. Um, but he still got one, and it's Vet 1. Uh, rather, Vet 2 fairly soon once it destroys his half-track from the AI. Um, the scraping support was a bit premature. There's pretty much nothing that it can hit. Um, so while I was talking shit, um, the Germans decided to go, to go for... Um, how did they lose all their vehicles? Well, like, how is this even possible? Okay, so, uh, Uncle Gon looks like the only guy who's still got a bit of wits. It has two Panthers on the field, and it's going to pretty much flank these um, Cromwells and destroy the last one. Uh, I'm guessing it was the AT gun plus the airstrikes that have destroyed the... Yeah, there's a few unmanned AT guns, so I'm guessing the German were just putting all their vehicles over here in the center and they just lost them all. Uh, the AI is it's understandable, they lost its shit. Um, Major looks like down here, he attempted to push up against the AT gun and was destroyed possibly by a mine, but I was expecting no less from this area of the map. And Lagmaster J, I am really not certain how he lost this panther. He had a panther as well. And I cannot see the carcass for the life of me. Possibly this is its engine, um, or possibly it's just some barrels, I'm not sure. But this Panther is also just sitting around with pretty much no engine. And the Germans have actually lost our VP because I was too busy talking. Yay me. Um, so this was a really fun game to watch. Uh, Fives is Pershing is on the field and will be easily able to destroy these few units that are left. And now the VP um, will go down mercilessly ending the game for the Germans, putting them out of their misery. So I, I hope you enjoyed this cast, I hope you enjoyed this replay, I hope you learned something from this replay. 